Base Clan looking to be in great touch. Let's get underway. Your cast is here, of course, Ollie and Demo. Thank you very much, Riley. We are ready to get underway now. Map number two. Villa is where we head. Not a map that Furia are very well known for. Not really currently a map that FaZe are particularly well known for either. We haven't seen it anywhere near as much as we saw it inside of stage two. I've seen them play it though. We did see them play it. I believe it was against MIBR. 7-3 mm -hmm. for FaZe. 7-3 was... win fairly easy from them. I think the big difference in that game uh, especially was FaZe were, were really solid on their attacks being able to take um, four attacks in a row so that it was a, a free free even split um, I believe with, with defenses but FaZe um, being able then just to just to get the attack and, and just absolute steamroll um, so I mean FaZe if their attacks are going to be you know fairly up to standard and fairly up to scratch then it could see them over the line, and Furia, from what we've seen at Coastline, Ollie, attacks very sloppy with the trades, like you mentioned, but for the first time that I've really taken notice of Furia, very sloppy with the time management as well, I'd say. Yeah, and that was the weird thing, wasn't mm. it? It's not a team that we usually attest to having poor time management, and that was exactly where we found ourselves, so... We'll have to see if that's something that does continue. There's a few rounds to watch before we get to Furia on the attack because it's going to be FaZe starting out here. Beautiful six pick there. A Monty into an IQ and an Oryx into a Valk. Mm -hmm. Galaxy Brain plays from Astro. Is indeed. I mean, it just must be one of those. He must just see an Oryx and go, this is going to be a Valkyrie, boys. Mm -hmm. I'm going to six pick. Look at FaZe's bands. Those are just target bands, aren't they? Like, there, there's not... For sure, yeah. Like, we haven't really seen FaZe have that degree of those type of bands this season. Most of the bands they've went for have been you know, fairly standard. You look at the, the bands they went for last time on Villa, it was Habana and Mira. Again, fairly standard bands, but this is specifically targeted against Fantasy. And to be fair, he is the, the main staple of this side. He is that kind of talisman player that, that we look at. And, and if you want to go on out here right just to target one guy, we can't really fault them because it is justified just how good fantasy is this season. You really couldn't do a lot worse than target fantasy solely, and it makes a great deal of sense. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see the bands coming through as something a bit different than the norm that we get inside of regular play. It's nice seeing something other than a, a Thatcher ban, for example, um, as you know, we've, we've not really seen that be too common an occurrence. Flores and Mirror removed from Furia. So again, targets to a point. You know, we know that FaZe likes to play a little bit of Flores. We know that Mirror is very popular on Villa as well. Iron Man on the Ayana. What a sight that we get to see every day. Trying to gather a little bit of intel. This is how Fancy always finds himself in these tricky situations. He just puts himself in harm's way time after time. Does, and he relies on those lightning speed reactions to get himself out of, out of dodge. Always, just sometimes just makes it difficult, doesn't he, for himself? And I don't know. Sometimes he is able just to footwork his way out of it, isn't he? There is moments where you think, "How? Just, just how?" It um, kind of reminds me of Doki a few years ago. Uh, slippery, slippery Scotsman. Of course, we we know him very well, Ollie, and just in terms of what he can perform. And I think him and Fancy kind of have similar play styles, where they get themselves in positions that you're maybe not expecting to those type of positions can gift them two kills. Yeah. You know, that, that's the kind of players that they are, is that they can change the course of a round right from the get-go. You know how many times have we seen Doki sit in a corner, all of a sudden he swings at like two minutes 20 and he's got two kills. One that might be the hard breach. That's around done. Yeah. That's that's the kind of impact that they can have, is they can make or break a round. This round may be broken, given that Fantasy did get taken down. Mm -hmm. um, it's still pretty early to tell. There's still a minute left. And FaZe haven't really taken too much control. Still got Rare playing underneath. He's going to have the C4. Astro, of course, on the IQ. Now just getting himself onto the balcony outside of Master. There's still a lot here, really, for FaZe to do in terms of taking into that upstairs. Lender going to kick things off with a kill onto Cameraman, removing a couple of those nades. Very slow and steady from FaZe. But they need to get a move on. 35 seconds to go. Really any sight pressure still. Players from Furia below. Give me a nade. That is great information. Lenda tanks the full nade though, Ollie. 
still alive and fortunate for FaZe. Furia will come out of his hiding position inside a kitchen. Start to maneuver his way up towards Astro Stairs. FaZe Clan, where do you go from here? What is going to be the play? Bullet will get eliminated. Shotgun close and Furia will rain in with a flurry of kills. Souls have been able to get one kill, but quickly traded off. FaZe just looked lost for the majority of that round. Three seconds ago, Cyber has nowhere to hide. Furia will find him, and Furia will find the first round on Villain. And what a strange round it was. FaZe just not doing a lot there throughout the entirety of that one. A little bit uh, unfortunate to see them them letting that one slip through their fingers, but they were never really in position to, to, to really take any sort of mm. significant ground. They just left everything too late. We didn't get to see a great deal of the FaZe players' POV, so we don't really know exactly what it was that they were doing throughout the majority. But there was certainly an initial pressure and push that came through study and uh, AVA games. But there was no real pressure and nothing really ever happening in toward that master bedroom. That's a staple of a trophy statuary attack and we just didn't see it. Yeah, FaZe don't know what they were up to. I do have to say I think FaZe were very hard done not getting that nade kill. I think that was very unfortunate. I think that maybe could have changed the course of how that round went out. But... Sadly, didn't get the kill, was able to tank it, and and yeah, Furia, very, very fortunate in that position. But again, I think Furia did well of applying early pressure. You know, we seen who was it, was it, uh, was, was it Heiser, or was it Rare, whoever it was, was downstairs in Kitchen for God knows how long. Wasn't challenged, wasn't pressured at all. So FaZe just uh, didn't really know what they wanted to go for, they were all over the place. kind of stark contrast to the sort of coordinated phase that we saw back on coast you know we saw them taking very concise control of exactly what it was that they wanted and really just getting caught out here on villa might just take them a couple of rounds to get into things or we could be seeing the good old winning your opponent's map pick mm -hmm. that has happened plenty of times before of course Oh, man. Good info. Very good info. Lander. Opening pick. Cyber goes down. He sledged into the barrel. And he's been picked off. You can't be going for those sort of plays. Like, Fury are very aware of where FaZe want to be trying to enter on through here. Look at this. Every single time that a drone's thrown on the window or an Iana clone goes in, there's a Fury player there ready and waiting just to say, nope. You're not having that information. We're not giving that one away for you. Faze. Using a man. Trying to use those nades again. Using the vertical angles that you can maneuver yourself into. On Villa. A lot of destruction. So much destructibility on this map. Crazy at times to see just how many angles and different positions an attacker can take up from below. For Buck. We usually see quite a bit of Buck in this map. Helps out a bit. Once again, FaZe haven't got anything on the board, Ollie, and only a minute 20 to go. These vertical angles being held upstairs from the bar is going to make it very, very tough. Any FaZe player to walk up towards those main stairs, Fantasy will eliminate one, and there's Miracle using the vertical angles I was expecting to see from Furia. And FaZe not even in it for the second time in a row. They have looked out of it. Lost, you could say, on Villa. Miracle. Just see somebody but cannot finish off bullet. I don't really think it matters. Fury have all the pressure, have all the control and phase clan. At this stage, how long are you gonna waste outside? That's the question. Well, 40 seconds left. Faye's not really in too much of a position to do all that much here. Gold. To be able to shoot the C4 off the door frame, but Fancy is going to be thirsty for the swing. He is going to get taken down as Curiosity really does kill him, but Bullet picks one up onto highs as well. Very quickly, this has gone from a 5 versus 2 to a 3 versus 2. And if there was a couple more seconds, you would think that there'd be a bit more of a chance here, but Bullet only on 1 HP. It's not going to take much from Rare to shut him down. Souls looking to move through in from Study as well. 
Seven seconds left, and this one likely going to go out on time. Souls picks one up onto rare. Pre-fires as best as he can. He found three there, but they're all remembered as exit frags. Mm -hmm. That's all they're going to be. No issues for Furia. Very reckless, I think. If you add it to all, it's not really the moment for it. He's going for a quick barrel rush. Using the sledge and just got annihilated straight away and not a lot of teams fall for that i know it has happened in the past where teams have went very very hard into that kind of area off the map where they've tried to pull a fast one straight up master stairs and tried to catch a roamer by surprise but not anymore not anymore so this means that we're going to go to the third bomb site for fury which will be the kitchen and dining room seen valkyrie be brought into the fray of things no i do go in response Fate of went for more of the Rome on Ollie. We're seeing Jackal be applied. I think that could do them quite well. I think a lot of the time that FaZe is losing is trying to corral these roamers. Fury are a team that are known for their ability to roam. They don't tend to play too many anchor positions. You can just take a look at the lineup that they're rocking here to see that demonstrated quite well. We're anticipating Lender to be offside. We're anticipating Rare to go out there and stretch his legs. Rare a player, by the way, who is slowly but surely really flexing away from those support roles as, and, and more into those flexible roles as he was typically a, a bit of a mute smoke and, and sort of thermite Hibana player historically. And of late, at least on the defense, is regularly finding himself on something that's a little bit more, le a little bit less site-centric and a little bit more get out there on the roam and have a little bit of utility to play with, so... Nice to see him put on those positions and see if he can gain some results. Incredible gunner. Again, early aggression. Fantasy. He is he just hears a window and he runs straight for it. LMG. Be aware of it and bullets still just spraying through. Waste already over hundred bullets near enough. And Amanda. Is he up to thinking for a quick jump out? There's somebody in the window right above him. I wonder if he's going to take the plunge. It will be cameraman on the Jackal bullet now. We'll send a drone in. That side of the map. wonder if he can find anyone. See now. Moved in towards library. There's a Jackal ping on the player upstairs. I believe that is going to be I think, rare on... Is that going to be fancy on the Elysian? Actually, I think they found where he's going to be positioned. But it's really Lander. I think they need to take care of, first of all. Face haven't really made a move yet. Bullet! Oh, the chance goes begging Ollie. How has he missed that one? He's going to be kicking himself for that one for sure. Still trying to keep hold of the angle through the window, but may not be given another opportunity. At least not as keen as the last. Cyber trying to make his way through. Could come to blows here with Lender. Lender doesn't seem too aware at the moment. Actually, he's going to be caught out on drone. He's getting live Zed pinged. Lender eventually gets himself out of harm's way. Astro may be going for a bit more of a direct approach in as he's just on the lower pantry stairs. Bullet's moved his way all the way into bicycle now as well, so can start to really further restrict the space that Lender actually has to work with. Looking a lot better here from FaZe. They're certainly in much better positions to be trying to affect onto this vertical and move in onto the side. Astro just going to dip himself in and find one onto Miracle. That's going to do a lot to free up the time as there are only 50 seconds left and the fewer smoke player smoke canisters remaining the better of the two quick kills coming in one responded rare eventually cut on down you can see the crossfire in action as it's all down to lender looks to push himself on in the plant is going to be getting confirmed doesn't have a c4 in hand so he's really just going to be a passenger in the rest of this round eventually put out of his misery by cyber but it could have been any number of the phase players playing to the whistle focusing on the objective there a much better time management from phase yeah it was a much slower paced round also which was a little bit strange you could say considering that uh phase have kind of struggled with time management but they took it nice and slow and they just kind of crept up slowly but surely and they were able to get themselves in a position where they could take these gunfights and take these kills and try and get the fuse down so that is the the first fuse that phase have managed to get off inside of this match and that's a good start for them gets them back in the game it doesn't give fury a a hefty lead. And we know what Fury is like whenever they have a bit of momentum only. They can do it best as anyone else can. 
look at what happened to Liquid this week in our opening matches of this tournament. Furia, 7 0 Liquid. Exactly. Not a team that you can afford to give all too much momentum to at all. And I think after the Coastline game to kick off this best of three, I think Fury are probably going to be a little bit more cautious going into any sort of string of momentum that they do get. And maybe that's how they just let themselves get sort of torn apart limb by limb in that previous round. We need that fire in the belly. We need that fight that we're used to seeing. Maybe we get it this time. This was the... The really strange and slow take that kicked off the whole game and really set the pace for this map. FaZe didn't get themselves into Master. They didn't really get themselves in through Study and Aviator games. It was a very, very strange and weird take that Furia just were able to really take apart. Framing up for some outside Valkyrie cameras here in an attempt to gather a bit of info. I do hope Lender isn't going to send himself flying out of that window. It's a good camera. Another camera from uh, these LATAM teams this weekend, Ollie, that I might steal. You know? It's one just... straight into your camera folder. Shameless, Ollie. I'm shameless. That's what it's like in ranked, though. You, I hear you've got to, you know, make those sort of plays. Mm -hmm. you've, you've got to play like a rat to beat the best. That's, that's what I've learned. But then again, Valkyrie, who, who's letting Valkyrie in through Villa? I think that's probably the first question I have to ask these teams. Why is Valkyrie here? Why is she allowed? Well, that's it, isn't it? I mean, when you start target banning Fancy, you can afford to let the Valkyrie through. Mm -hmm. But again, at what cost? It's forcing Astro yep. to play the IQ a lot. And then while he loves an LMG, it's not someone that we do see him playing all too often. Word, what's happening right now on towards the study side? Somehow Furia managed to get the opening pick, but then very swiftly Bullet is there to make up for it. And it is surprising to see FaZe lose that opening engagement, considering their lineup. They have two operators designed to challenge these rumors. They have Dokabi and they have Jackal, yet they still lose that engagement. Dokabi is gone, so the second logic bomb will not be deployed, but they still have their Jackal, so that's still a positive for them. I think the main reason why they're trying to get that Jackal Ollie is obviously to find information and, and kind of put pressure on these roamers, but more than anything, identify who they're trying to target. We've kind of talked that, okay, okay, Fantasy's going to be the guy that FaZe are after. They've target banned for a reason. If they can find out the positions of these high caliber players and really put pressure on them and kind of disable them before they can get going, that's going to be a massive bonus for FaZe. Rare threatening a C4 there onto the astronomy window. Near a drone just behind him as well, possibly inside of Astro. Souls is going to be posting that drone up there and just providing a little bit of info here. Again, a relatively slow approach from FaZe, taking a long time to get all of these ducks in a row before going to the execute. Toxic Babe canisters can now be used. A miracle. He's going to be able to shut down Astro. I'm not sure that was an engagement. I was anticipating him to be able to win, if I'm being honest, but he does it nonetheless. Caraman shuts Lender down as we level up at three versus three, but still Toxic Babe gas to push through. None left for Miracle, though, so the next 20 seconds are going to be fairly free. We now hear smokes coming down from the attackers, and that's going to cover the plant as it goes down. Bullet takes down Rare. Highs has to try and move on through, but can't. Cover of smoke is going to be too risky to really play around. Now it all dissipates, and we can see, yep, the plant has gone down right next to that master door. Bullet, three kills on the round, looking, I'm sure, to make it four highs. But Souls down, but taken out from the bathroom. Bullet, the man of the round. Four kills there for FaZe. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady for them. Um, just great siege, I think, being played all around at the moment. Um, from, from really either side, I think Fury start off really well. Two great opening defenses, but FaZe, they've just changed the pace of how they've been attacking. Much slower. They're bringing these operators, such as the Jackal who's working for them, such as the Dope, but maybe the Dope we didn't get that much of a look in, but still, they're not allowing Furia to have the same sense of freedom. They're trying to scare Furia back into the bomb site, which is exactly where FaZe want them to be. They want them all clogged up in the pipes, in, you know, kind of jumping on top of each other and tripping over each other in the bomb sites. So that's where FaZe really excels whenever they have uh, their opponent's trap. So, all credit to FaZe, they have... They pull back extremely well. And, and keep in mind, Ollie, they still have the defense to go. Phase 1, 
four defenses against MIBR in this map. They, they didn't lose a single one. Well, that's the dangerous thing, isn't it? You know, we're currently sat at 2-2. There's a chance for anything at this point. We can go 4-2 either, either side, or we can still go 3-3. But these rounds that FaZe are winning on the attack could prove crucial come the split. Because if FaZe then are able to lock out their defense, which we've seen them do before, it's, it's going to be an easy 2-0. It's going to be a 2-0 series, said and done, FaZe locked into the finals. This is where you need to be fighting tooth and nail for every single round. As the defenders on Villa, that really is where you should be coming up with a large number of your rounds. So... Like I say, still time to go equal. Still time to go 4-2 for either team. But this next one's going to be crucial in deciding that rare. How unlucky can you be getting there taking a ton of chip damage? Doesn't have a clear idea of exactly where it is that Cyber's pre-firing from and dips himself off the angle. No opening kills yet, which has been... Uh... Really the big talk to see who will get that open engagement. Usually it has been Furia winning them, but FaZe has still managed to pull back even at that deficit. FaZe doing their drone work. They've been very slow. Make sure they find out all, all the information, find out positions of players, but... Poor Furia, you know, how are Furia going to cope with... As soon as this Jackal's been picked up, it looks as if they've been forced under just a little bit more pressure from them, and... Cameron's doing a great job. We'll smoke off that rotation to try and move into Sully. Potentially Miracle will swing on to Astro. And Fantasy finds Cameron. FaZe have completely changed the tempo. But they've paid for it this time, Ollie. They tried to go fast. They tried to take early control of the map. But they've been they've been sat down. Souls is going to be able to find one onto Fantasy. But it looks like a bit of a consolation prize at this point. There's still half the round remains. Blender, next to fall, immediately traded out there by Rare. If that kill hadn't been traded, then I think Fury would have been in a very tricky situation indeed. As it stands, it's still not ideal. There's four nades left here for FaZe. The fancy being taken down at around the halfway mark. There's not going to be as many magnets out as there could be. So there's a chance to make some of these nades really work here. Rare, going to be pushing up, looking to challenge on to 90. Great angle getting opened up there. Look at the teamwork that FaZe are playing with here. They've managed to pull this back from a 5 versus 2 into now, sorry, 5 versus 3 into now a 2 versus 2. And we know what Souls is capable of. He is the clutch master. And this time he's got some assistance. He's got Bullet by his side, who has been by far and away the best fragger on FaZe this weekend. Still, four nades left. 40 seconds and a big chance here for FaZe to clutch this one back. An impressive one. They were to pull up down from the EV5 deficit. Pull up Souls. What have they got in store for? Still have three nades. Only three nades still in the back pockets. All we have to worry about is maybe some well, my disc. It could be lurking. There's a smoke grenade from Miracle. And also hold on to 90. Rares in a brilliant position inside a study. He can cover both doorways, both entrances into the bomb site. He will have a lock. A quick deep push will come in. Red Ping's also being fired out. Bullet does not have the cover. And Rare will slip in. Eliminate the diffuse carrier. It's only a matter of time. You have to highlight Rare in the position he was in. Could shut down anything Furia wanted to go to. And Furia had no idea that he was in that position. Bullet not having enough time to really do anything after diffuser went down. Furia, respond. 3-2 you got to wonder where Bullet was watching there because the biggest vulnerability for a maps plan is going to be from Study Doorway. Mm. You can't be seen from anywhere else aside from Study Doorway. So you've got to wonder what Bullet was trying to hold on to there. I understand he's trying to keep himself alive and maybe the call was that the player was still in Study. But they've got legs and they can always make that rotation. So a little bit of an unfortunate one. Phase showing they've got that fight. And it kind of surprised me to see them get that far, honestly. Furia, again, gave a couple of really soft kills away. And that could have been a round that Furia came away from thinking, yeah, it wasn't even close. Whereas the plant was being attempted, and if that kill hadn't come down, then there would have been a big problem. If Rare had got swung then, all of a sudden it's a bit of a nightmare situation, and you've let an easy one slip. So the rounds that Furia are getting, they're not coming to them easy, and FaZe aren't giving them up willy-nilly at all. We're going to have to see now how this final round goes. A chance for Furia to make it 4-2. 
but equally a chance for FaZe to level things out. FaZe haven't been too successful here in this site. We were able to get the plan down in the previous round and narrowly snagged the win. But it was another one that came right down to the wire. FaZe taking a lot of time to set up that final execute. Yep. Indeed. So, FaZe. They pull off a free free half volley. That is looking spicy for them. Really, really spicy. Bit of a must round win, I think, for Furia. They haven't looked the best on attack today so far. FaZe have definitely been on their game with the defense. FaZe. Uh, go for it. They don't have to worry about the AVG, which they have struggled with in the past. Now it will be towards that trophy and statuary now. This was uh, again, one that really relied on those early engagements and winning against those those roamers. And I think FaZe did that very, very well. That Jackal pick still being as dominant as ever. Land up with the Valkyrie. Same cameras. Just to give him some support. Make sure nobody's on his 90 window. And he can try and hold 94. Majority of that round, I'm sure, until he starts getting pushed out. Astro, that I really shouldn't really have any issues with Valkyrie cameras on this side of the map. It is very difficult sometimes, Ollie, I think, to really judge where FaZe are going to go. What a nade from Cyber. I agree, by the way. I was just very impressed at Cyber lining that nade up. I really enjoy watching players line C4s and nades and things like that. Um, it is very difficult. They don't really give all too much away in the opening part of the round. It's nice to see them this this round really challenging in onto Brilliant. this master. Great use of the Maverick hole again by Bullet. He's an absolute demon on those Maverick lines. As soon as it's opened, he's there holding the angle and he's ready and waiting. So a great little opener there that essentially is going to really cut this site in half. A yeah, C4 is. now being attempted. Rare, great heads-up play to take down Bullet there. Some incredible game since another C4 is going to land here. Four highs. So Fury are really making the most out of those explosives. And honestly, they've been fairly quiet throughout the course of this oh. game. Rare with three as he switches back and forth. Pistol, shotgun, highs to lock things out. My, oh my. Where did that come from from Fury? Sure, the, the, the first C4, fair enough. Great work. The second comes in, you're thinking, okay, now they can actually work with something. And then we see Rare swing the Maverick holes that we mentioned. It cuts the bomb site in two. But they don't care. They're still swinging it. Furia, great round to pull that back. 4-2. I said it was a well-needed round win. And it definitely does set them up nicely. Gives them a bit of breathing room as they head into these attacks. Well, now the game's on. It really is. Because the pressure is... Pretty much entirely on phase to catch a couple of these rounds back. Fury and now have got the sniff at a chance. They just need an equal 3-3 three, three, half. That's all they need out of this. They don't need anything fancy. They don't need anything flashy. They just need an equal share of the spoils out of the next six rounds. They're going for a very exotic lineup. I'm worried, Demo. I'm panicking. As a Fury fan, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I'm seeing things I haven't seen before. A Monty? Fair enough. A Dokubi? Okay. Monty and a Dokubi? Now I'm getting a little bit worried. Fantasy on the book? Panic stations. Like, the, the sirens going off. We're at DEFCON 5. What's going on? I'm seeing Cyber and Ella. And I, I hope that that is the shotgun. It will be. Guaranteed. And if it is, that's going to cause a lot of issues for Furia. Look at Furia's lineup volley. No hard breach. Unless we're seeing a hard breach gadget from either the Monty or the Bug. But then again, it is unlikely that you would sacrifice smokes and flashbangs in the current meta. And if they don't have the hard breach gadgets, then the issue with that is they're going to be pushing in the doorways. And that's exactly where the shotgun will annihilate you. Yep, he has a shotgun. So this is, like I said, panic stations. Yeah, I I'm on the same boat as you there. And I think that boat for Fury might be the Titanic. Is the FO-12 the iceberg? Very well could be. It's not looking good. I'm part of, like, that's that's the kind of lineup where it's it's almost like you, you've you messed up when picking. It's like, oh, I'll play the Monty. It's like, oh yeah, I'll play the Dockerby. It's like, and then someone's like, oh yeah, well, I'll play the book then. And it's like, well, what about the hard breach? And it's like, no, we've not got, not got enough time. Sorry, you don't six need picks it. over. Mm -hmm. Six pick phase is over. Like, it really does start to worry. 
Even just the Maverick. We've seen how damaging Maverick can be. FaZe have already put Maverick to great use on this map. We know what Maverick's capable of. Give it a look. See how it works. We're likely going to see quicker rounds, I would imagine, from Fury, given the lineup that they're bringing. They've got the Logic Bomb phone calls to work off. They've got the Monty that can provide a bit more of that human drone style information. So really, we should be seeing quicker rounds because they haven't got the, the fortune to sort of sit back and, and really gather all that information, given that they've got the Monty without a gun. So he needs to be doing something. You can hear one of the Logic Bomb phone calls coming in now. Fancy just checking out the drones, making sure that the flanks are all intact. It's looking like it could be a plant just inside a statuary doorway at this rate. Where are Furia thinking of going? Maybe some rotates would help them out, because like I said, Ollie, they're, they're trying to fight fire against a raging inferno that is Cyber. I don't know if this is going to be the best option for them. And Aid gets an out will that land. It does connect, but doesn't do any damage to any of the face players. And pull up. My oh my. Just sits away and land there. He was so close to his screen. As soon as he died, he just flew right back into the back of his chair. And Fury are in a difficult, difficult position. That's great work though from the buck. Actually forces Cyber downstairs. But Cyber. Oh, everybody is going to have fantasy for dinner. But nope. Faze in a terrible position now because they don't have any control of that trophy. Astro is being pestered by the Monty. That's only a matter of time before Heise and the rest of Fury move in. Astro will cover though. Heise is eliminated. Astro with a second. Somehow while he's doing the business. Miracle for mine has completely pulled the back step. Does the top fires on the Astro. He finally goes down 10 seconds. Cameraman C4 out of nowhere. That's a lonely Monty all by himself. No hope for Fury. What a chaotic round! That round was back and forth as you like. FaZe have done a great job to come away with it in the end. You've got to give Fury the credit because there's there's a world where that comes off. I think High's got really unlucky pushing on through into Trophy. Astro did a great job of picking up the two kills in contrast and was actually able to essentially win the round at that point. The Maverick, sorry, the, the Monty just getting harassed throughout the entirety of the whole thing. No opportunity to get the plant down. It was a good attempt, but that's all it ever was. It was an attempt by Furia, and it was one that didn't work out for them. They've got a couple of rounds to play with here, but they need to be making sure that they're taking full advantage from here on out. And I guess that's demonstrated in the lineup. We're not seeing Fancy on the book anymore. We seldom do. He got himself a kill, and that's enough. It's a tick in the spreadsheet. It's a stat that has been padded. But aside from that, not anymore. Thank you very much. The Monty has been left behind as well. Rare this time, opting for the hard breach. So a, a much better, more consistent, and more workable lineup here, really, that Fury are going to be bringing. But maybe the closest round we've seen so far, Demo, in terms of scrappy back and forth? Yeah, 100%. Not, not even a, a contest there. That was insanity. But still, it was what I feared from Fury. Whenever you don't have the hard breach, you're bottlenecked. And that is literally what that was. The floodgates opened, and all of a sudden, the, the emergency flood, uh, floodgates just shut it all up again. So, FaZe definitely having the, the kind of double protection. Yes, they lose that first guy. They lost Cyber. But then they were so swift to put another man in that position to hold them back. And, and Astro did just that. Astro played out of his skin, Ollie. Do you know how difficult that is to go up against two players breathing down your neck while there's also a Monty constantly feeding out information to those two players? Incredible work from Astro. Would have loved to have seen his point of view off it. Yeah, I think Astro's, I'm going to mention there, single-handedly almost won the round there for phase. Just in being able to get those couple of kills and stay alive and the amount of time that he was able to, to spend in the process. Well, phase is going to be very happy with that one. Certainly a round they've been able to snag, as it were. Should give them a bit of confidence moving forward. But Fury are going to be playing a slightly different game from here on out. They're not looking to bring them on, so they're not looking to... Put a lot of pressure in that direction. A one-for-one one trade. We're seeing that become quite an increasing trend. Both of those guys are fairly happy with each other in terms of the There's nice the shots. It's, uh, I think it was a, a single shot from the SMG as well from mm -hmm. Cameraman, which is arguably the most impressive. But Cyber, he's going to further the advantage. Takes down Miracle with it. Logic Bombs, the smoke. And a lot of what Fury are trying to rely on to make these pushes happen. Uh, 
Um, I mean, I think Cyber has been great in those kind of moments where nothing's really happening just to appear. What a C4. What Prediction of the day, Ollie. Just has a feeling that somebody might be running up to him. Just fired the C4. Hail Mary, you could say. And that works a charm. Except I just mentioned Cyber and how he's been doing great in the Rome game. Just the moments where there's nothing really happening. He appears with one kill, two kills, and he's done just that. Great example. And also wanted to touch on that opening engagement. That trade has worked out really well for FaZe because they eliminated the IQ. The Valkyrie camera is going to be untouched now. Fury and Eden to come up with a bit of a plan here. They've got a minute to try and make something happen. Rare caught out on the mozzie drone. Hasn't got a great deal of health to speak of either. And with Bullet playing deep inside a study with a line of sight all the way through, it isn't going to be an easy angle to challenge onto. Particularly with the Baron 9. Still, three Toxic Babe canisters for Souls as well. Bullet can just hold that angle all day long. There knows that he's going to have a hard time pushing on through. Takes a couple of breaths of the Toxic Babe, and that's going to put him back to one shot. If he wasn't before, he certainly is now. New Jammer there going to cut off and not allow him to open up that Vault Wall either. Pushing down the 90 now. Cyber, all he needs is a little bit of a swing here, and he's going to find himself one. Rare. Struggling for that information. Eventually gets put out of his misery. Cyber to pick up four on the round. Great couple of kills there to close it out. Bitch back, Bosh. Easy as they come. Face the defense looking pretty untouchable right now, Ollie. Furia struggling. I would say quite similar to what we've seen from FaZe in the first rounds. FaZe didn't really have anything going for them. Now Fury are feeling the, uh, the same issues, but... I would say that FaZe always had the potential to do a lot more in the attack. I just think they're a better attacking side in Villa compared to Furia. And yes, we know how important it was for Fury to get that 4-2. And this is where it is important. Could you imagine if this was uh, an even split going into this half? FaZe would be sitting 5-3 up right now if that was the case. It's true, and it's still worth remembering that all Fury and Eid is an equal 3-3 split. So as soon as they start picking up, you know, if they start picking up around here, it's going to be the start of things. Things have leveled up now. And we were kind of anticipating them to do so. We were anticipating FaZe to have a good run of defense here. We've mentioned that the two rounds that FaZe won on the attack could be crucial in deciding who wins not only this game, but this best of three as a whole and who advances into the finals tomorrow. Fury need to stand up and be counted, and they need to do it soon. This site is a good opportunity to do so. Again, we're seeing a little bit of a roll switch around. The Dokubi not working as well as Miracle would like, so he's going to be moving on to the Lion instead. Still the same sort of idea, provide that level of disruption, help search out those Romas. And Rare, as opposed to the Monty and the Hibana that he's played up until this point, will finally be on the Maverick. I guess this is more something that we would expect for a villa we would expect a, Mon a maverick to be brought at least as uh, on its own and, and maybe in conjunction with a hibana but you can see that him struggling to get the vault wall open last time due to the mute jammers is enough reason for him to go yeah these guys are going to be running mute all the time nobody else can flick flex onto the maverick as well so we need to make something happen there early line scan and an early trade of kills miracle takes down bullet but cyber who's leveled himself up Quite a bit over the last couple of rounds is there, ready and waiting. Fantasy sees a little bit of success elsewhere, but the second player to die to Cyber in oh. pretty much exactly the same fashion demo. Excuse me? She, she, right. Cyber got that first kill, and Miracle knew somebody was down there, but didn't even aim in. And, like, you know that you've checked the other side of the room, and, and Astro has found another. What's going on with Furia? They know the positions. Fancy can't even finish off Cyber. He's too worried about the guy below. And what's happening? Cyber jumped at him. But it was a live bait for Astro then to swing. Fantasy goes down. And it's a 1v2. What is going on? Seven people dead, Ollie. With inside a minute, pretty much. It's worth noting as well that the site is kitchen. So for, for everything to happen in main stairs, a, kitchen, a little bit strange. Kitchen defense. Are you sure that wasn't like the lobby defense? Is that a new bomb site? Is, is it a new bomb? Maybe, maybe we missed the update. Mm. Like, highs caught out on the Valkyrie camera. One versus two and plenty of time. Two nades. By no means is this locked in for phase. Uses the gone six. Burn out the Malusi Banshee. Cooks the nade for the rotate. FaZe are playing fairly deep here, though. We can see the silhouettes further 
There's another Toxic Babe canister flies on in. Second nade now being cooked. It is going to get sent out and deal damage to both players. More to Astro than it does to Souls, but that is at least something. It has eased High's job a little bit here if he does get himself into an engagement. Still not working off any information. Does have one drone to his name, but may not be in a great position. Knows that there could be a player. Ooh, actually goes for the rotation. That's a huge play. Could give himself a good chance here now. Pick Souls. He's only got to land one bullet onto Astro. He's going to start to bait the plant out now. He's 35 seconds. Lots of time to be able to get this one down. Astro has to hold his nerve. Rips the C4. Sends it flying. Misses. Highs pushes back up a little bit further this time. He's now going to th start thinking about going for the gunfight. Remember, one shot is all that needs to be landed. Highs lands the finishing blow. Furia finally get themselves around here on the attack. Excellent work. Excellent work from Highs. Holds his nerve in the 1v2. All you said, it's definitely winnable. With the utility that he had in the back pocket, still two nades. He was able to clear out positions that maybe could have caught him by surprise. I think the Gon 6 being able to eliminate... Uh, the Banshee as well was very, very strong. Didn't really have to worry about moving into it. And then maybe he could have got swung. He just gets rid of it there and then. No issues. But still, Furia can't rely on that all as well as he did. It still was not the greatest of rounds from Furia. It was very sloppy. The trade game was there, but not really there. Remember, remember they had the opening pick only. They had the opening kill. And, and they still made it very difficult for themselves. Yeah, one versus two, never ideal to try and clutch up. You uh, you really hope to be getting the rounds a little bit more convincingly than that. It's going to want phase. Trophy and statuary. Now, this is where things started to get a little bit weird for Fury. This is where we started to see the Monty uh, fantasy on the book and the Dokubi. Now, we're not seeing the Monty. We're still seeing fantasy on the book, which is still a little bit strange to me. I'll be honest. Much, uh, you'd be much more likely to see someone like Heiser or Lender rock in the book. And maybe fancy on the Ayana. But there's obviously a reason for it. Yeah. But this time, at least, we've got Hibana. Now, it isn't Maverick. We, we've got to remember that. It's not as good as the Maverick. It's going to get caught out, potentially. That Cade could be a bit of a problem. But at least there's a little bit of potential. Was that a C4? Yes, that I, was. I, I'm, I'm, I'm cameraman C4. I tell you, I bet if Cyber had thrown it, it had landed. <laughs> Cyber and those opening C4s against Fury yep. is a menace. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very, very impressive. And now we'll see if he's going to be capitalized on damage onto the line, especially. Again, has wasted a C4 for it and didn't really gain a kill, which is you're always expecting whenever you do use that gadget. So Fury, back them a little bit slow pace now after that opening C4. Phase almost defending this as if it's an aviator in games, aren't they? Ollie defending that that main stairs for all their work, but hardwire will be exploded on by the ash. See, three of them located towards aviator in games, so a full top floor extension. The phase is what we're witnessing. Fury should have enough utility to deal with this quite successfully. Bullet for the old snatch and grab will swing, and oh, I don't know if Cameron should have stuck around to cover him. Maybe they all should have dashed away and just not what they they deserve. Bullet. Oh, that is filthy from Bullet. Has a suspicion that somebody might be right beside him on the other, on the other end of the soft wall. And we'll take that kill. So Faze sitting in the lead now. They have that kill advantage. Still have control of Avier and Games. And only, not only are they wasting utility, not only are they wasting time. They're getting kills. Which is even got a further stun Fury for the refrag. We've talked about Fury and how they rely on a good amount of people in that kind of final engagements to make things happen for them. It's not going to be as successful for Furia if they're again put in those situations where it's a 1v2, if they're in 2v3. Absolutely, especially given that the site is trophy statuary for everything to be happening there inside a study of Master. It's a the little bit... multiple ways being pushed in that, that bomb site. I mean, there really is, and, and you can see that FaZe have been able to get themselves back and the pressure isn't on them in terms of time to now make something happen inside of Master Bedroom in terms of opening the wall up. That's going to be very difficult to do now. Heiser's still got a nade, so there's chance that we can make something happen with that. But Miracle's going to very quickly be met with an electroclawed wall. Astro lining himself up to get that elevated right. angle onto the Master Door. Bit of a burn coming through now as well as flashbangs will remove any catches. The nade. I... Misses the game. Oh. That was the last one as well. I mean, that's the that's the round hung in the balance. That's the problem with leaving things until 
sub 50 seconds remaining. Cyber takes a couple of pot shots there at the Ayana clone. Caught out on the drone, but he isn't going to matter at all. He's got the shotgun and he has got the close range. Late prone bullet. He's going to take down highs as if Cyber wasn't going to anyway. Rare now with a desperate attempt at a push through astronomy. Looking and searching for the angle, but can't find anything. A plant is being attempted, but it's very quickly going to be thwarted as Cyber picks up the final two there. Great defensive round from FaZe. Puts them back in contention here. Leveling things up once again. Another close affair, but the nades miss the Kyde Claw Ollie. That was that was it. That was the tipping point for Furia. And whenever you're in that position, all you can do is run through doorways, and that's never gonna work for you, as was shown. Face pull around back. Five five now is where we sit, even once again. But Furia, they now have to attack into another bomb site, which was not favorable for them. Aviator and games up next for FaZe. <laughs> Big round coming up, round number 11. Match point potential for one of these sides. A little bit of a bait there from Astro. Baited out the Clash, six onto the Valkyrie. It was enough to force Lender onto the Zephyr though. It's not gonna be the, the biggest change in the world, but at least something worth noting. As you mentioned, Demo, an unsuccessful approach last time from Furia in here. In typical FaZe fashion on Villa, FaZe defend and do a lot of the damage and do a lot of the fighting miles away from the site. They're like, yeah, we'll just fight in Master Bedroom when it's uh, when it's an AVG and we'll fight over in a AVG when it's a, when it's a statuary and, and trophy. We're not bothered about fighting near the site. We're happy to have that off-site presence and really be a bit of a problem. That's exactly what we see them attempting here once again with a big setup going on inside a trophy and statuary. Plenty of Valkyrie cameras there. I think Astro's just popped one outside. Vertical being opened as well. A lot of pressure on Fury for this round. It's not only Villa that's on the line for them. It's the whole series. FaZe the team that are one map ahead at the minute. A couple of rounds here for FaZe. Sees them locked into tomorrow. Does indeed. Fury. I mean, of course, they've got what they came for, Ollie. Keep that in mind. They got that top four position. They're going to the major. Anything else is a bonus. If they lose, they lose. I don't think they'll be that hung up about it. I think it'll just be, okay, yeah, we didn't play as well today. We still have the major goal. Fourteen kills for Cyber, by the way. I don't know if you noticed. Fourteen kills in ten rounds. And, and even, I think, in Coastline, the guy was playing extremely well. Right now, he's looking to be the MVP of the series, in my opinion. Oh, without a doubt, Cyber has put in a, a very consistent effort. And it, it seems all we need to do is say his name. And he finds himself a kill. It happened a so couple good. of rounds ago to you, Demo. It's happening right here. And now Lender shut down. Miracle chunked to within an inch of his life as the drone hole is being utilized as well. E1D comes through. Highs. Pops the Iana, tries to gather a little bit of info there. Cameraman with the C4 onto rare. Things are falling Hello? apart here Why for Fury. Seeing this right now, Fantasy has somehow slipped into the heart of the bomb site. He does not have the diffuser though. Phase of gifted control. Because do they know they have the diffuser? Surely not. Look at the placement is outside. What's happened to Phase here? How have they let Fantasy just walk in like this? Cameraman is stuck on 90. Heist has jumped in through pig window and now he's sat waiting to see if Cameraman wants to try and get the pipe out of him, but everyone's just staying still at the moment. This is a very unweary time for FaZe to be in. Highs finds Astro and Furia. They have recovered the fuser. Camera was thinking about going for a swing, but just thinks, you know what? I'm going to back off and wait to see what Souls wants to do. Souls has got himself into study, but I, I have no idea where this is going to go. This is insanity. 45 seconds or so for FaZe to try and hold on here. We've seen them clutch a couple of these kind of engagements out before. Cameraman playing very aggressively, though, given the circumstances. and almost just going to give himself away. It's almost as if he wanted Souls to be in the clutch, and Souls isn't going to get a chance either. Fantasy shuts him down. Great little flick to finish off the round, but a strange decision there from FaZe. Why did Cameraman push it? I, I wouldn't say we should be looking at Cameraman that round. How is Fantasy? In the middle of the bomb site at like a minute 40. How's that happened? I mean, that's the way that FaZe defend. I commented on it at the start of the round. FaZe are happy to defend very off site and then look to look to drop back. Fantasy's just read into that and he's gone, yep, yeah, these guys want to play off site. 
we're just gonna we're just, i'm just gonna push him directly he probably walked up main stairs or something ridiculous baffled lost for words i don't know where this now goes because that is kind of thrown the balance out of sorts i would say Phase are gonna go to kitchen keep in mind ollie they choked the 1v2 on this bomb site it didn't work for them last time we're seeing a cap gun now i know you love cap gun i don't want them anywhere near me i don't mind a bit of cap gun i think it's a desperate you know it's times are tough cap gun gets going Going gets tough. Capcom gets going. Something like that. Obviously, to try and stop Fancy from just being able to crouch walk in somewhere, it's going to give a little bit more of an early warning system. Great gun. Impacts as well. So, there could be, you know, reasons beyond the Capcom traps for uh, for the pick here. It's going to give something for Furia to worry about as soon as they notice that Capcom's a factor. It slows down the drone and it slows down players pushing in. So, it can do things in that regard as well. But... I do feel like FaZe have certainly let one slip here. The chance that we will end up on Cafe after all. Big round for Furia. They don't want to let this one slip to an OT. They want to try and get this locked out here and now. See how Furia choose to approach this one. Given the weight of the round, I'm sure that it isn't going to be over in a flash. And hopefully we don't see everybody pushing into cyber as we have done previously, particularly in that opening engagement. Regularly finds himself involved in those, but at least for the time being, it's a more of a cautious approach. E1D comes out, nothing glaringly obvious off the back of it. The pressure here for cyber to be dealing with, though, feels it and chooses that rotation. Don't forget, site being kitchen. A big extension over toward main stairs is quite unusual. Cyber not looking to take too much time up here, just more than happy to sit and hold for 10 or 15 seconds and then make his move. Yeah, and Cyber, of course, as we know, being a standout player currently in the series. And there we go, another kill, just waits and very sloppy there from Furia, not doing the drone work. Ooh, almost we're seeing the wall banks come in and Cyber has been able to dodge them all. Fantasy runs downstairs. Into the open arms of cameraman, the cat can works for them. And now Furia, they're chasing ghosts downstairs. Look how quick cameraman has fled. He's out of there. Doesn't need to stay there for any longer than necessary, especially now. Oh, cameraman gonna pick up another on the round lender. My word. The next player to fall. That's why he picks the cap cam. Obviously has an affinity. Great shot there from Red. Good bit of information as well. That soul's taken care of. Cyber gets himself into a big engagement here. Needs to land some significant shots and will do just exactly that. We could be going all the way here to an OT rare. He is all that stands between that and that being a possibility. Caught out on the Valkyrie camera. Is going to be able to remove it. Does have the diffuser, but unlikely to be able to get it down. Chooses to smoke off. Knows there's a player that's going to be coming up the lower stairs. But still got two more to worry about. The vertical angles being a thing as well. We can now deduce that there could be another player pushing him from a different angle. Looking now to get the plant down. Could be a massive clutch on the cards here, but he does need to start landing a couple of shots. Can't afford to be get caught in the crossfire, and that is exactly what will happen. C4 swung through, but it's going to be Astro to pick up that final kill. We are guaranteed an overtime here. Mm -hmm. Overtime will be locked in now, and who gets the defense? Looks to be FaZe. Hmm, that is, that is very fortunate for FaZe that they get the defense. Um, it has been 4-2 splits on either end with being defender-sided. And we, Ollie, me and you have cast the games where we've seen the side that really shouldn't be winning actually ends up being the better side. I look at Coastline, for example. I think, was it um, our, our Coastline game between FaZe and Fury in the regular season? Um, let me actually go look at that. Because I think yeah. it was sided to one side and actually the other side end up winning it. Let me see. Overtime does that. Overtime's a weird thing. A game can go 4-2 halves defense, and then OT will go attackers. I don't know what it... It, it happens more often than not, and it's a really sort of strange anomaly because you would anticipate it to continue going defense. But there is always chance for that to change, and I guess the more times that you get to attack onto a side, the teams that are better at adapting and better at mixing things up are going to have further ideas on how to make things work here. Already we're seeing a very different approach from Furia again. They're... 
once again choosing to get rid of the hard breach entirely. It hasn't been a big focus from them, to be honest. And Rare maybe yeah. recognizing that he's top fragging at the moment. He might just fancy a better gun. So he's got himself the F2 and why not? Uh, the only thing that I would worry is now they've kind of went back into that same form. Um, if you think back to whenever they had the Monty, didn't have a hard breach then. And this is for the trophy statuary. This is like the bottleneck site. This is where you can get really choked up. I think that was displayed twice on occasions. And I fear that the same might happen. Realistically, if you're a phase, you don't even need to roam heavy. I think the main reason why Furia know that they can probably afford to not take a hard breach is they must be confident in themselves to take these gunfights from the roamers. FaZe have been all over the show. They're, they have had a roam game for every single site. And if Furia believe that they can win these engagements, then you don't really have to worry about opening walls whenever you, you could be sat in a five versus two. It doesn't matter if you have hard breach stats, they just flood the site. G1D comes out and immediately nothing obvious off the back of it. Fancy. Entering on through on the IQ, searching out for those cameras. Knows that there's a chance there's going to be a couple of Valkyries knocking around, but feels it's safe enough to continue the drone work for now. Still a pocket camera for Bullet there as he just tosses it outside, see if he can glean any more info. Fury, a good control now of the south side. We can start to push on through. You mentioned demo about the hard breach and it being a single doorway push. It's really never easy to try and pull off and you could do with getting yourself a couple of entries before actually making those sort of aggressions and pushes you're seemingly a long way off that point yeah in this round where they're still moving quite slowly and see he's up to slipping his way into an aggressive position he's looking to walk into the bomb site good info though from that valkyrie camera they will spot out lander but he himself spots out the valkyrie camera that was watching him and the information being fed back to the base, so... Well, know that they don't have any more info in the bedroom balcony. A minute to go. This is where Fury and need to get something on the board, Ollie. We've mentioned, if that time starts ticking down, the smoke canisters will play a big part in this round. There's still a C4 on the side of Bullet also. Landit, he's just trying his best to put any pressure he can, but he just can't find any at the moment. Bullet will be droned out from the Twitch drone, and slip his way into a better position will hide behind the fireplace there goes the lion charge and will furia take the plunge will they play off this information still a long way to go 35 seconds and everybody left alive bullet misses a couple of shots there astro picks up some pieces cyber as well a great c4 but it will go Ow. off and take rare out of action how does bullet get away with that he's got one health miracle looks to make his way now up east stairs. Highs is going to be at the top, but immediately swung by Cyber. Miracle finds the first kill at the 14 second mark for Furia. The second at the 10 second. He's got three more left to find. Is he going to be given the opportunity? He had a chance, but no, it was a very slim one. Astro in with the trade. Great swing there, FaZe. I'm not quite sure how they've gotten away with that one demo. Every single thing went their way. It did. Lack of information, I think, from Lander, who jumped in to walk in. Couple of shots being missed by Bullet, I was worried, but Astro had the cover. And then on the window, I don't know how how Bullet pulled, up, pulled off that C4. He got absolutely peppered with bullets. It was down to, what, 5 HP and still pulls off a C4. But on the other side, apart from the bedroom, We've seen the rest of Furia. They got choked up into those choke points. The smoke casters were going out. And all Fury could do is just try their luck. Try and swing in. Take those gunfights. But it's, it's never going to work. And that's what I feared from Furia. Is if FaZe don't give them the early opening kills. Which, to be fair to FaZe, no intention of kind of roaming as heavy as what they did. They were very quick to pull everybody back. And put a lot of their resources into the bedroom hold. It gave Fury absolutely nothing to play off. Without the hard breach, they have nothing. It's unfortunate, isn't it? Because we know Hard Breach to be such an integral part of the attacking game, regardless of map, regardless of anything. It is just a fact that Hard Breach is, is so integral to, to attack a success in Siege. And when we consistently see teams opt to not bring it, it doesn't matter how close they get, it isn't close enough. You know, it's, it's made infinitely more difficult. 
everything is is heightened in terms of pressure and you just you got a question why isn't the hard breach being brought is there something deeper do fury not want to give anything away on this map are they playing it a little bit differently knowing that they've got the major coming up is are they just out of ideas on this map is is that a, you know that's an unlikely factor but still you've got to ask those questions phase look how they're prioritizing it double hard breach you've got both an ace and a maverick that's going to give them plenty of options to try and get things open Selma charge will be destroyed there, but an angle is opened. Furia immediately under a lot more pressure. A lot earlier on into the round. Demonstrated by Cyber's opening. And to see on that main stairs, a favorable position that we always see him play in. We need to start asking questions, Ollie, but Lander this game. 4 and 11. It's just not up to scratch of the standard this team should be at at this stage. But who knows, maybe he could turn this around if he gets this kill. Could give Furia pressure to back into the game. There's Fantasy, as expected, on the main stairs. Sledge will move in, open up a hole that will look on towards the red stairs. The Fury were ready to pounce onto him, but Cyber sits in back away. Cyber, 20 kills also in the midst of this. is That's the 20 mark, and, and just MVP of the series for me has been a standout member for FaZe today. And a big reason why they've been winning these rounds. The Rome game has been unquestionable from him. Furia, what can they do to stop him? He's still alive. That main stairs looks to be an area that he's see familiar with. And he wants to try and push, but trying to play these vertical holes himself. That will look in towards Vault, but nobody from Furia. Really biting at the chance to go for a peek. Still a slow approach from FaZe. One player lost on either side. Minute left, it's gonna really come down to phase to make something happen here. We're gonna be playing on red stairs, got the shotgun in hand, ready to deny any access. Got Cyber on the lower portion of the stairs. Cameraman threatening pig window with souls moving through statuary as well. So Rare is slowly but surely getting pounced on here and is gonna be taken out there by Cyber. Quick swing is all it takes. Camera removed as well. Lender comes up trumps with a great kill onto Souls, however, and a second onto Bullet. Really picking him off now. Three versus two. It's looking good for Furia. Phase. I've got a great deal to go on here. Toxic Babe Canister gonna cut off any access. Vault wall not open. Bit of info there being gathered. Lender already has had a couple of kills on the round. Still got a C4 to try and make a difference with here as he puts some pre-fire shots in. A lot of information available as well. Triple on the round for Cyber, but it's not going to be enough. Cameraman, one HP and a dream, locks himself into the 1v1. This is for the game. Got the pistol out and he's going, going up against Lender here. The time is going to run out. Lender plays that one beautifully. Knows he doesn't need to give anything up. We're going to Max OT. Max OT, the breach not open. Couldn't do anything from that position. A hard one to swallow. But Faze getting caught out. Lender. I asked to see something and he did appear that round, Dolly. Quite a big part in it. Really stemmed the, the kind of flow and almost tried to kill the game dead in its tracks there. So all credit to him. He showed up where it counts. Final round of Villa. What a match this has been. So back and forth. Faze have the defense, Ollie. This is the game changer. It has been a defender-sided Villa. They go to Kitchen. They've won it once, and they've also lost it once. Th this is a difficult one to call. A very difficult predicament to see Fury be put into now. Mostly because I think Fury, look at the sixth pick, Ollie. They're onto the Habana pick. They might be thinking that they have to attack into another bomb site that isn't the Kitchen. They might have thought they had to, to attack into the Aviator. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? Because Fury have been a team willing to not bring a hard breach mm -hmm. or if they feel like they can get away with it. And now they're bringing the hard breach and they could probably get away with it not bringing it for this site. It's the site that we've seen the least hard breach pressure on today in on Villa as a whole. So it's uh, maybe one that Rare's going to be kicking himself out. Maybe could have got away with bringing the switch this time. But alas, they've got what they've got. This is the last round of Villa that we're going to see. Potentially the last round of this series, depending on how it goes. Phase, of course, winning earlier on this afternoon on Coastline. Could be looking to take it as a clean 2-0, which has been the trend so far in the Copa Elite 6. But there's always time for that OT. Are we going to see an entirely different Fury here? Do you think that they're just going to really start to focus in? 
They've got the hard breach now, so they can essentially do whatever they like. If they want to take that upstairs control, mm -hmm. use the book to its fullest. You know, they've, got, they've got options here. Need to get the opening pick, and if they get the opening pick on the cyber, especially, it puts them in an incredible position. The buff will open up the window and try to grasp onto said cyber. He quickly runs away and falls back to the safety of Trophy Statuary. Waste a bit of time, just takes a bullet or two, so nothing really to worry about from FaZe. That's also a lion scan gone. Furia wanting to go for the position. Living room is going to be held by FaZe, but boy. Not wanting to really give anything up to, to Fury. You can see that FaZe, Ollie, they're, they're not afraid to, to give up control of the map. They can fall back. They just don't want to give Fury a kills. The biggest issue for Fury has been in the kind of like final couple of seconds has actually been able to trade successfully. If FaZe can constantly keep up their trades, what a C4 from Cyber. Ollie, he is just on a different planet right now. It really is. Great game since there from Cyber to get the job done. Fancy getting caught out in the drone. Not something that you really want to see. And as you mentioned, FaZe is not really looking to take the gunfight. It's obviously willing to use the, that utility. And if a C4 opportunity presents itself, get it out there and see what you can get. But don't get yourself into a gunfight that you could potentially lose. That's exactly what they've done there. Happy to give that time away to Fury. Happy knowing that Fury are going to spend that time. Still with the presence to clear out on that top floor. As the minute mark hits, highs is further chunked down as well. This is where we can start expecting to see a couple more gunfights ensuing as Lender. He takes down onto Bullet. Cyber, great opportunity there for a refrag as he shuts Miracle down. Caught entirely flat-footed. Cyber, unstoppable so far on Villa. And that is not changing here inside of this last round. Toxic Babe canister to cut off anybody rotating up through the stairs. Only 35 seconds left here, and the next Furia player will fall to the hands of Astro. Highs in there with a one-for-one -one trade. Can now look to pick up that diffuser as Rare tries to push through, but is met with a Toxic Babe canister. Slowly but surely, we've come down to a three versus two. Highs still on that top floor. Going to bounce a nade down. See if there's anything that he can gain with that. Caraman takes him out with the shotgun and picks the second up with the SMG. Great little one-two there from Caraman to close things out. Good bit of information there as we got to see in the final kill count. That's going to do it for FaZe. What a game. What a series. Coastline came very easily to them, but they had to fight to the bitter end on Villa to get a result here against Furia. FaZe, they're going to put themselves into our grand finals tomorrow. They didn't have, and all eight cybersecurity plays a big part for FaZe this game. And my, oh, my.